you're just one person you said you know mentally you have to cognitively understand that and then i think you have to say it out loud <laughs> let's be clear i know everybody hates some more this let's tag on these emails so i now have three thousand because 10 people had to show their input and get their shine on in the email case in the email stream whatever that might be let's cut some of those things out so if you're listening and you think you're alone and you're having these feelings Here's a snippet from an interview I did on the Negotiate Anything podcast with Kwame Christian earlier this year. I, I love this. And really, I, I'll shout out my friend, Rebecca Zong. She has a podcast, Negotiate Your Best Life. That's really what it sounds like we're doing here with this. We're negotiating our best life because I. it's funny, as you said that, um, I'm like, that's true. And it should be obvious why do I not act as if it's obvious? And I think that's so interesting too, because we have to explicitly articulate this so we could have it clearly in our minds. Because I can think about times where I say, oh man, work is hard. Let me just, uh, you know, let me just keep on muscling through it at mm -hmm. home and pretending like there's not going to be an impact. Oh, home is hard. Work will be my refuge and I'll keep on muscling through it without making any adjustments and just not recognizing I'm only one person. That, <laughs> that's one it. Person, right. One person. That's it. <laughs> that's Man. such a good point. That's such a good point. And, and then when you realize that you're just one person, you said, you know, mentally you have to cognitively understand that. And then I think you have to say it out loud like you just did. Mm -hmm. Right. And bring it to your conscious mind into reality and then start moving accordingly. Because mm -hmm. you I mean, we all know it like it's obvious, but understanding it cognitively and saying it out loud and then moving accordingly so that your calendar starts to display that so that how you interact in, in these meetings to meet, to meet, to meet, right? Which one of these can we cut out, right? <laughs> let's be clear. I know everybody hates some more this, let's tag on these emails. So I now have 3000 because 10 people had to show their input and get their shine on in the email, case, in the email string, whatever that might be, let's cut some of those things out and let's save each other some time too, right? An effective way to just a couple, couple tips on some boundaries, right? <laughs> Yeah, but absolutely. That, that's it. And here's the thing. It doesn't happen by accident. You can't just have this realization. Like you said, we have to act accordingly. And so I think about life in many ways, like a garden. We, I don't just like get dirt and then throw some seeds down and then just watch and <laughs> assume everything's going to get, go, go well. The parts of the garden that I like, I need to take care of it. I need to nurture it. Mm -hmm. There are weeds that are going to grow and it's going to be very easy for those weeds to grow. I need to be uh, proactive about removing those weeds and it'll be easier for me to remove them when they are smaller right and so these this is how we can now focus our negotiation skills and difficult conversation skills this is how we start to have these uh, conversations about setting boundaries because once we start to identify these current problems and potential problems now through the art of conversation and negotiation we can start to build the life that we design Absolutely. It's such a great analogy. Um, I've been reading Dr. Anita Phillips' book, The Garden Within, and she she references that um, as the obviously as the center of the book, our hearts are our garden and, and understanding we have to tend to that internally. And then externally, we'll bear the fruit that we're looking for. And to your point, you know, tending vigilant, vigilantly to that garden by setting your boundaries, by understanding the people that you want to work with and want to be around and, and your, your circle, your sponsors, your coaches, who, mentors, whomever those are, which are so important in that process, because sometimes they can spot, you know, if the soil isn't right too for you, if they're the right person. So all of those things are, are also equally as important as around, around burnout, right? I don't, we weren't put on this earth to be alone, we were meant to be in community. And that's part of, you know, going through that entire burnout cycle is understanding that you're you're probably going to need support. Yeah. If you want, if you want to get through it in a way that, you know, doesn't leave you beat up too bad. And ultimately maybe it can help to help you to accelerate it because more people have been through it than not. So if you're listening and you think you're alone and you're having these feelings, you're not. I promise you. More people are experiencing whether they can put a name to it or not more pe people are experiencing it than than not experiencing at this point um it's it's to me it's an epidemic i truly hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed doing it for you however it doesn't have to end there 
come on over to our Facebook group community right now. You're going to get exclusive content that we weren't able to include in this episode as well as past episodes. We've got challenges. We've got research. We've got lives. You name it all for you in bite-sized chunks so that you can continue this development journey. Go ahead, click the link right now in the description show notes, and we'll see you there.